men and women who served in the military, what's the biggest misconception of war? Waiting. Everything is large vast periods of boredom interlaced with small intense periods of high stress. I've flown several hundred combat sorties and I have maybe a handful of stories that weren't we took off. Nothing happened. Then we landed. To be fair, the warfare I've seen isn't really warfare. That it's boom boom bang all the time. Even on the front lines, which is kind of a relative term in modern warfare anyway, the vast majority of the time it's just boring as crap. That every airman is flying or is flown in sort of aircraft on a daily weekly basis. Don't believe the commercials, they only reflect the 5% of the USAF. Yup, I'm Air Force Paul Fuels. When I get asked what plane I fly, I tell them the R11, which is a fuel truck, but they don't know that. That if you gave veterans the chance to return to war, minus having to go through a packing list, pre-mobilization and SRP, paperwork and immunizations, it might surprise you that more than a handful would go back in a heartbeat. Not every military members have seen combat. There are a lot of us who dealt with administrative side which while not as bad as combat, sucks hard. I was infantry, but I know without our brave chair force rangers I wouldn't have things like hot chow, ammunition, my paycheck, etc. According to my retired marine co-worker, the majority of people sign up because it's a practically guaranteed job, or they want benefits, or they want a college grant, not to serve their country. Also, apparently most retired veterans get annoyed by constantly hearing thank you for your service, as my cousin puts it, I drove a truck in Germany for 4 years and spent my leave skiing in the Alps. Most just learn to politely give a tight lip smile and nod. Maybe a quiet thank you, and ignore it. Especially if you live in a red area, because the instant they find out, they'll rattle that off like you flipped a switch. That if you've served in the military, that you've been to war. I served 4 years in the navy, worked on airplanes in the desert, zero sea time, zero war time. My dad was a Korean war vet, spent the whole time in West Virginia wrenching on planes. That you can't think straight. Or at least, make a decision the same way you would during non-war time. Any decision made in war is made with extreme stress and severe lack of sleep. In war time, dumb mistakes are unavoidable. One minute you are doing regular bunk drills. The next minute you're told to move out ASAP because the locale might get shelled. But there isn't any emotion. Yet you move faster and are stressed, but you aren't scared. There isn't any screaming. No rush mistakes or panic. It's like an army of ants. You step on their hill and everyone just comes to rebuild it like nothing happened. Things I learned. Hours of boredom and a tedium then minutes of fear. Kids will be kids wherever you are in the world. It brings out the best and worst in people. You will meet people who you will die for, but others who are so scummy that it will take active effort to not accidentally injure them. That you understand what you're doing or the implications of your actions. I was a teenager when I went to Iraq. I had no clue why we were fighting, really. In hindsight, I was just blindly following orders I had been conditioned to trust. Quite frankly, you were not the only one who probably felt that way with that war. Not really a misconception, but the amount of money wasted in war and in the military industrial complex would blow your freaking mind. It doesn't really faze me anymore, but it's still crazy looking at some of the dollar amounts I've helped spend over the years. I remember seeing a vendor's pricing guy difference for civilian companies in the military, it was a huge markup for the military. For me, that people know what they are doing. You can train and go to the range and patrol through the field and do endless sand table exercises, but when you're actually getting shot at, nobody has any idea what to do. It becomes a frantic crap show, everybody is talking on the radio at once and nobody wants to freak up so everybody just sort of goes overboard. Runner up, that you never let your guard down. There were two times I was deployed that if something had been trying to get me, it would have succeeded. Time 1 was on fire watch at a schoolhouse north of Al Kut. Whole company was sleeping and I was just sort of zoning out. I heard a noise approaching me from behind and frantically tried to unsling my rifle as a plastic bag blew by. The other time we were on a vehicle patrol and I was on the Pintel mounted machine gun. I was zoning out and an Iraqi police truck passed us. Dude in the back had his own machine gun and was flagging us. 
If he had been anything but an ally, he'd have had us for sure. Twice my lack of attention could have gotten me killed. It sticks with you. Deployments can be monotonous. More hurry up and wait than actually doing our job. The crappy civilian narrative stereotype that we must all be infantrymen and probably have killed someone. When in reality, not everyone was combat arms. The typical social media vet voices thinking they can speak for all of us. Which is not helping the public perception of today's veterans. I'm not a vet but I did spend the first 10 years of my life in a war zone. There are countless misconceptions. 1. That life doesn't go on. We were at war but we still had birthday parties, etc. In fact, it is during war that you need things like that most daily. Everyone was hilarious because everything was dying. You could not cope otherwise. 2. That soldiers are heroes. Some of them somehow maintained their humanity throughout the war and still treated human beings as human beings but many many others killed senselessly, raped, stole, etc. Not to mention the fact that the majority of soldiers had to dehumanize every one of the locals to be able to cope with killing civilians every once in a while. You don't stop seeing the enemy as an enemy when you see neighborhood children playing. They're still part of the other side. 3. That any battle ever stops or is confined to a geographical location. Modern warfare spares no one. Military or civilian. Prepared or unprepared. Man woman or child. Bro and law says soldiers and oftentimes complete buttholes and terrible guys hiding behind the disguise of a uniform. They aren't all good he says. This is true. Also, the reverse is true. I had a few friends kicked out of the marine corps that were good guys. The phrase I use is, good guy, bad marine. It's so, freaking, boring. I was army infantry in AFGN 1112 in a relatively hot part of the country. Walking around, sitting around, waiting around, for an entire year. I served in the Lebanese army as a platoon commander. Fought one battle against Islamic insurgents. Nowhere support. Limited artillery support fighting in one meter wide alleys. It is very very ugly and you crap oh pants from fear. What keeps you going is the men next to you. It's interesting to see a perspective from a non-American. If we're going based on films. They don't show troops drawing dumb cartoons and dong art while they furiously masturbate in a 120 degree portic john. No scenes where the guy hasn't taken a crap in 3 days and then when he finally can it comes out looking like play-doh. When they show scenes of basic boot they usually skip over the reception period when recruits show up and then get bored as frick until you actually start hoping that you can finally go do some push-ups and get yelled at. If we're going based on real life, most people just don't realize how boring it actually is and the weird crap that guys come up with to pass the time. I've sat with another guy long enough that we narrated out our life stories to one another using a Forrest Gump southern accent and mapping out what actors we'd pick to play the characters in our lives. Over time you just don't care anymore. The first couple weeks you are paranoid and thinking you're going to die on every patrol. The last few weeks you are numb to everything. Nothing really bothers you. The last fi fight I was in on my last tour I just started laughing when it was happening. That everyone in the military is smart, disciplined, professional, trained, etc. Everyone in the military is a complete idiot, including me. I'm in military, I'm idiot, can confirm. That deep down, deep deep down, you say to yourself that you or your mates wouldn't be part of the statistics. It's so low, everything is alright, and then you're wrong. Twice on my case, it's a misconception between a man to himself. It is amazing how much you think about the odds to calm yourself. Let's see we've only lost 2000 troops out of 500,000 or so to date. And then someone you know dies. At that point you realize that the move from the denominator to the numerator can be a very quick trip indeed. 2003 Iraq invasion. Army infantry. We captured a number of insurgents. Some spoke English. I really liked some of them. Some are really nice guys outside of being on the opposing team. I had so much more in common with them than people back home. While I don't support them, have sympathy, or believe in what they were doing by any means, the hurt killed people I knew. But I won't forget them either. Not sure anyone will see this by now but here goes. For me it was adjusting to life after I came back. 
I spent 7 solid months in a remote part of Afghanistan without any R&R. We had no luxuries and very little creature comforts. We were crapping in bags and burning them. Pee into tubes in the floor and washing ourselves with a little bag of water that we'd leave in the sun to warm up. We were contacted almost daily with small arms, RPGs and IDF. A Chinook would land now and then and give us more rations and whatnot and we housed some Yank Calcins that were passing though a couple times but that was it we were on our own and up against it. Constantly stressed, exhausted and sleep deprived. I eventually got to the stage where I couldn't imagine my family's or girlfriend's faces in my thoughts anymore. Days blended into weeks, and weeks into months. Time and date had little meaning. And then one day a chopper picked me and the rest of my platoon up and we were out of there. There was no last mission to achieve a final objective, no wild celebration of victory. We just up and left. A few days later I was sat on my couch watching BBC news like nothing had ever happened. The world had carried on and not even noticed I was gone or that I'd endured these hardships. I could not escape the feeling of restlessness. I was on edge all of the time, pacing up and down my house and twiddling my thumbs not having a clue what to do. I was ripped from a high intensity dangerous environment and went from 100 to 0 so quick that a younger me didn't know how to deal with it. It isn't an action movie with non-stop combat. It's more like a daily grind of monotonous work and public relations sprinkled with mortar rounds and pants crapping. I'm National Guard. I'm Como. Waiting for our upcoming deployment. Maybe someday I'll be able to post what it's like if I ever do see combat. I honestly don't know what to expect being in a field artillery unit. I wish you a boring but deployment shipmate. Even though you are NG. When you've crushed your enemies and seen them driven before you, you're probably not going to hear the lamentation of their women. Wars aren't fought by stoic badasses with a sweet 5 o'clock shadow and a one-liner on their lips. Wars are fought by goofy 20-year-olds with sunburned cheeks who just want to get back to their tents so they can play Xbox with their buddies. That the troops are all heroes and good guys. It's filled with dirtbags and people who got picked on in high school so they want to take it out on people they have some authority over. I've worked with guys who ended up being convicted for possession of child p, rape, all kinds of crap, and so many pieces of crap cheating on their spouses I've lost count. A guy on my squad in Afghanistan cheated on his wife, who was also deployed to the same place with us. So many guys who pull these amazing, gorgeous, smart funny, and good-hearted women just because of their uniform, and wouldn't even hesitate to jump on the chance to cheat on them at every possible opportunity. I've seen a fair amount of women do it too, but even accounting for the number of men versus women I saw an unbelievably high number of men cheating on their spouses. They just laugh it off. So much fake appearances and petty high school masculinity bulls. I couldn't get out of there fast enough. If you cheat on a spouse who treats you right, I hope you fall into a pit of poisonous snakes and catch on fire when you crawl out. Some GI got stabbed and killed by his side chick in Japan after she found out he had a wife and kid. I haven't deployed, yet, so I can't give insight on that aspect. I do serve and I can tell you this. 1. Not every soldier is a hero. There's a lot of crappy people in the military. That being said, some of the most genuine, caring, and overall kickers people I've met were through the army. 2. Even when deployed, it's not always war per se. For instance, my unit is heading to Kandahar in February. Our mission is essentially babysitting contractors. No one will leave the fob. 3. The movies don't show the stupid crap. Waiting for hours to do something. Constantly cleaning crap you cleaned the day before. Sitting in 2 hour meetings going over and changing a training schedule that'll be thrown out the window regardless because inevitably, crap happens and you have to adjust accordingly. 4. Basic is not hard, like, at all. Your drill instructors will essentially hold your hand through everything. Just show up at the right place, in the right uniform, on time and you'll make it through. 5. Your experience is unit dependent. You can get an awesome unit with great leadership where you're working 0900-1600, and that's it. Or you can get a crappy unit with crappy leadership where you're working 0600-1900, and get pulled for details on the weekends etc. 6. S6 plays a lot of spades. When it comes to actual combat, 
I think the biggest misconception is how little you actually know what the frick is going on. We're so used to war movies where the camera shows the good guys, then the bad guys, then the good guys moving, then the bad guy getting his RPG ready, then the good guys, then a couple bad guys getting shot, then the bad guy firing the RPG, then the RPG flying through the air. In reality, you only have your own point of view and it's dang near impossible to take everything in. So many times you're just shooting in the same direction as everyone else. Indirect fire like mortars and artillery don't whistle. There is no time to shout incoming and get on the ground. You just get hit. The only thing you might hear is the thunk from the mortar tube and if it's too far away or you weren't listening for it you would never hear it anyway. Then, there's about an instant of what sounds like paper tearing and something moving really freaking fast and then everything around you is exploding and there's dirt in your mouth. People stink. Literally. That's something no one talks about or gets screen time in movies. Your battle buddy is gonna smell like a rotten crap flavored ice cream cone with two scoops of butt sprinkles on top. You'll think the enemy doesn't even know WTF a shower is. Burning bodies is the nastiest smell ever created. I was in the navy. So. I think the fact people think you can see the enemy is wrong. Once you know the enemy is there. It is too late. Long story that I know no one will read, but I am writing it for Cathosis. I had a friend that joined before me, never saw a single combat, explosion or anything but he still got PTSD. Had another friend who saw loads of crap but came back fine. We both were convinced that the first guy was lying about the PTSD. I joined the National Guard a few months later because I love my country and state. Tried to do everything they needed and more. Volunteered for everything extra I could. When I finally deployed I had several things go wrong. One of my soldiers was hurt in a non-combat activity and another had his wife of less than a year pass away back in the states. My unit's leadership started to blame me for anything that went wrong that I even looked at. Then I found out my wife was cheating on me. All of this happened in a 3 month span. I made a plan to kill myself. I had it all planned on where. How, and in front of who. As I walked there I realized something wasn't right so I went to another SGT to ask for help. He took me to the commander who then sent me to the person who was causing all of the grief there. But now I didn't have a weapon. This guy berated me for an hour until his superior finally stopped him. They got me help while there and that guy wasn't allowed to even wave at me anymore. I finished my deployment, went home, and tried to pick up my life. It didn't work. I continued to get worse and more depressed, ended up getting into a few legal issues, was arrested twice, put on probation, and kicked out of the army. During this time I finally got some help from a therapist in the VA and one outside. Turns out you can develop PTSD quite easily in a war zone. Also, fun fact, PTSD and depression can cause such a change in your brain chemistry that you can do things that are completely out of character for you normally. But the state nor VA doesn't care and won't help you if get in legal trouble. Finished probation. First offense. Was supposed to be removed from my record. But the state passed a new law. So I may be a felon for life. Even though I was honestly not in my right mind. Oh. And fun fact. The VA won't pay disability for PTSD that they diagnosed because it wasn't diagnosed while on active duty. TLDR. War can cause PTSD problems even if you don't see combat. Didn't serve, but worked on military bases in various garden spots for a couple of decades as a civilian contractor aka white collar mercenary. The biggest misconception is the belief that most people in the military see combat. Logistics and various support functions, beans and bullets, make up something like 80-90% of the effort. That all of us see combat. That we aren't flawed people. Everyone's flawed, and we have some serious frickin' doucher bags in the military. In the end, the only difference between me and some average Joe on the street is that I have a higher tolerance for bulls. That we're defending the rights of the American people. In my experience, most of us don't like civilians. I still don't like most civilians. I just keep it to myself in person. And nothing I did in my short 5 years of service did anything for anyone's rights in our country. I'm no expert. But I think it'd be better to say that we're fighting for the vested interests of the country. Which is not always a moral or ethical thing. That isn't to say that dealing with terrorists is wrong. 
just that our service gets painted wrong. That we can always tell who the enemy is, we can't. It's kind of like the police thing going on now. It's really easy to say after the fact that an officer using their firearm was a mistake, and that they should be punished. Fear does a lot to a guy. Now take that and put more red tape on it, but this time you were probably already shot at, or one of your buddies was, but there's plenty of people around, or they're all wearing clothing that makes them hard to distinguish, or that they wind up looking like the 15th guy you've seen while driving by them who just stared at you for a prolonged period of time. That we do it out of patriotism. A few years of service is mighty attractive to some college students for the education benefits it provides. Job preference? Check. Looks good on a resume? Check. Healthcare? Life insurance? The benefits stack up. War, in my experience, is boring as heck 99% of the time. But the other 1%, it's pants shittingly terrifying. Everyone knows about the terrifying part, but I don't think most movies would do well to try to truly capture the all-encompassing, Groundhog Day-like levels of monotony. Most movies show the military guys getting downtime and goofing off, but that's not really all that accurate either. The whole image of grilling steaks and drinking cold soda beer and smoking cigars while fortunate son plays loudly in the background is fantasy. It makes it look like everyone is either engaged in active comet, or just chillin'. The military is still a job, even if there's no one around to shoot it at that moment. So, yeah, there are patrols and engagements and stuff like that. But there's also paperwork and bathroom cleaning and these things called working hours that your chain of command is going to take full advantage of to ensure that the boring crappy parts get done. That admin in the military is basically the office but with uniforms. My friends, military and civilian, love that show and can't figure out why I don't, because I worked there for almost 20 years, quite literally. The only difference between Dunder Mifflin and the Wing Commander's building was that we wore uniforms. Yes the soldiers who serve are great, but not all soldiers are great people. They all bring with them the same stereotypes they got from home. A lot get past the why I gotta work with, insert any stereo gutter trash comment you prefer, mostly by just shoving it into the back of their minds where it will raise its ugly head when given the opportunity. Try as the military does to we are one team one fight you just can't get the racist hated a lot of people have towards, again people, place, ideology etc. So glad I have retired. Bet it's a vitriol crap show in the armed forces right about now. And I say that because of the way a lot of service members came out of the woodwork of racism. Quite a few were verbally reprimanded and told to shut the frick up or face UCMJ charges if they didn't stop their tantrums about having to serve under a black president. Again a lot come to serve because they want to serve, a larger still, portion come to serve because they have exhausted all other opportunities. Killing people halfway around the world doesn't protect any freedoms at home. Our freedoms get taken by politicians at home. That everyone that was in the military served in a war. I never saw combat. When I was in the army we weren't trying to kill anyone at the time. You can never tell to be honest unless intel was given and mission info was present. Besides that it's pinned the tail on the donkey. Source. Air Force veteran. It is 90% boredom 8% what was that and 2% oh crap oh crap. Unfortunately that 10% has a way of bleeding into your 90% for a while. I'm reminded about the only thing my grandfather, who fought in Asia, ever said about it. He always refused to talk about it, until one time my aunt said something along the lines of but you should be proud to have fought for your country. Upon which my grandfather replied, I'm sure those were exactly my friend Martin's last thoughts. When he died in my arms, bleeding out after we found him castrated alive. So, I think this is a good topic, because the general public, myself included, just can't even begin to fathom what it's like. The whole good guys versus bad guys line is much blurrier than people are comfortable admitting. We invaded two countries while I was serving. Even people who didn't particularly care for Saddam or the Taliban rose up to defend their nation against a literal invasion. The majority of these folks weren't evil. They were just protecting their homes. Think of it like China invades the US. Even regular people would take up arms. And there would be no telling the majority of our country that they were in the wrong even if the invasion was completely justified. 
but it's easier for propaganda when you just label everyone a terrorist and you can justify all sorts of war crime when you declare them to be enemy combatants rather than prisoners of war. The war is heck, and the other side did some crappy things, but we did, and routinely do, crappy things as well because we know that it is unlikely anyone will stop us. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.